Good morning. I'm going to be reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the perfect standard, the authorized version. You probably have been around long enough to recognize that when it comes to Christianity, probably the most despised book, as it were, amongst Christians is the authorized version, the King James Version. It is the most attacked book within the realm of Christianity. How many of you have heard the, any Bible will do, or find a Bible that suits you, meaning that you are the standard, not the scripture. Okay? How many of you have heard that? Probably quite a bit of you. If you happen to have an authorized version, follow along with me. Please, read along with me. If you do not, hey there, kid. Pay attention. Listen. I call you a kid. I'm going to be 50 years of age, Lord willing, this year. If you're 20-something, even 30-something, you're a kid. To someone who has been alive for nearly 50 years, half a century. <laughs> Pay attention. Psalm 90, from the authorized version. Lord. Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, not you. Dear friend, I got to tell you, and I'm going to be blunt with you, you're an idiot. If you really believe in your heart, that this the world came about through millions and billions and trillions of years. And the wa uh, carton of water that my wife got us yesterday, uh, it says right on the box there, over 500 million years ago. <laughs> You're, you, you have an unbalance up here if you truly believe. If you truly believe that man evolved over millions, billions of years. Okay? God created the heaven and the earth. The earth, I think at this point, is now 7,000 years old, I think. Anyway, verse 3. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. See, God wants to get your attention, and God can get your attention in any way he wants. He will purposely allow things to happen to you, to get you to a point to where you only have one option, son. <laughs> and in that one option, for those of you, the absurdity unto you, of crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because see, you're taught that you are your own standard, that you are your own God. Hence, it's absurd unto most of you to go to one that is greater than yourself. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night thousand years. See, we as mankind, we live on a timeline. Okay? The second law of thermodynamics, everything breaks down with time. <laughs> Evolution tells you that things get better with time. <laughs> 
Look, look, if you're an evolutionist, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to tell you straight. You're, you're an idiot. Okay? You are. If you believe the fairy tale that you evolved over millions and billions of years and that you came from the water as a sniveling piece of snot, I'm sorry. It's, that's stupid. Okay? But see, we as mankind live on this timeline. God the Father, our Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, lives here. Okay? He's here. Okay? God is not bound by our time. So literally a thousand years in light of an eternal being, such as our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, a thousand years is nothing. Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as a sleep. A sleep. A sleep. Not a sleep. It's the letter A, then sleep. Not a sleep. Okay? They are as a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. Hey, kid. Ah, I know the vanity of youth. I was once one. I was once a youth. <laughs> 30 years ago. I think you got time, don't you? You're in good health. Hmm? You look pretty, right? You're a handsome young man or a beautiful young woman. You think you got the time, right? You put it in the file cabinet back there. What, what if you don't have time? What if you don't? At any given moment, you can die. What if that were today? Ah, oh, you scoff at it, though. That only happens to the other guy. You, you think you're immortal. <laughs> Come on, it happens to us all. We all, we all, at one point in our life, in our vain shoe of a life, in the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. We all think growing up, eh, we're immortal, you know. All that stuff happens to the other guy. And one night, even though you might know the realities of the situation, you face it. Face what? The inevitability of death. When your heart stops for a few seconds and the, the burn comes up behind your eyes and your ears start to ring and you're like and then all of a sudden oh. what if you don't have time you know you have today but see on this day today is a day when you ought to consider Where are you going to go? <laughs> you think you're going to be regurgitated and, oh, what is it, uh, uh, not reanimated, reincarnated as something else? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> a galaxy far, far away, buddy. Huh? You think you're going to go to purgatory, huh? It's crazy. There's only two destinations for you. Heaven or hell. What if you don't have, what if, what if you don't have tomorrow? What if you don't have tomorrow? Huh? It, it, we are likened on the grass. Grass grows. Grass is growing right now. Lush and green. Winter comes and it dies. It comes brown and withers. That's us. That's us, son. Them good looks of yours, boy. Hmm. You can have plastic surgery till you hit blue in the face. It's vanity. Girl, them tattoos that you got while you're smacking your gums, chewing that bubble gum, huh? Them tattoos on you, they're going to sag. That barbed wire is going to become a picket fence in a couple years, girl.
For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Are we troubled? Excuse me. Listen to me. Listen to me, people. Look, look at me. Okay? Listen. God doesn't love you. Okay? If you reject the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the true Jesus who is God the Father, the true gospel, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? That Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he shed his blood on the cross. And you go the way of the cross, the elected way, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, man enough. It's your fault that he died. It's my fault too. And fear him and call upon his name and he save you. That's, that's salvation. And you reject that. God doesn't love you. You're, gonna, you're an enemy of God. You hear from Christianity. God loves you unconditionally. That is a lie. That's a lie. God doesn't love you, friend. You reject the gospel. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. And most of you have brains enough in your head to, to figure it out. Wait a minute, contradiction there. Okay? God loves me unconditionally, yet he's going to send me to hell. Yet he loves me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. God doesn't love you. The sooner... You realize that the better off you are. Let's continue. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Yes, we have a God who gets angry. He's angry at you. He's angry at the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet, W-H-E-T, his sword. I know, brother. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. No place for you to hide, boy. Girl, ain't no place for you to hide. You think you're pulling the wool over God the Father. And see, if you don't want to believe the inevitable truth that one day... You're going to give an account of yourself before God. That's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That's what's going to happen. And by the time most of you figure that out, it's going to be too late. You need to wake up. You need to wake up and get your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. I have nothing to do with Rome. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let's continue. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. See, when God who lives outside of our time, here's our time, here's God, he can see the beginning from the end. He knows everything. He knows when. Born, obviously. He he doesn't God knows everybody, but he does not know everyone through a relational thing. Okay? God knows who you are. God knows exactly who you are, what you've done, and where you're going, and he also knows when you're gonna die. But see, he doesn't know everyone as a personal relationship. Okay? The days of our years are three score years, a score, two, four, six, a score is twenty, two, four, six, and ten, seventy. Now in scripture we read that the the maximum that or the, the not the maximum that the limit that God prescribes upon man 
is 120 years. That's after the flood. And that dwindling of longevity happens gradually. Okay, because Adam lived almost a thousand years. Okay, and then you see mankind going from uh, 900 to 8 to 7 to 6 to, to 5 and so on and so on. Okay, but here it says the days of our years are three score years and 10. 70. 70. If you've lived 70 years, that's, that's a pretty good. It is capable for you to live longer, but what happens? And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly our way. Labor and sorrow. I have seen people who are in their past their 70s, yet they are laboring very hard, very diligently laboring to maintain their youthful vigor. It's so funny. Kids uh, want to grow up so they can do things, okay? People who grow up want to become kids so they can do things. It's a, it's a bizarre little circular thing here. But labor, I remember I saw this one dude, I don't remember his name. He was, he was like in his 70s, but he looked like he was 40. He had, of course, cosmetic surgery, and he was doing all this. He was laboring so hard to keep himself youthful. And the beauty of the age is the gray head. These bodies, which once were designed to be forever, but because of Adam and Eve, they deteriorate. Our bodies, dear friends, are made of dirt. You're dirt. I'm dirt. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. But see, it's your spirit and soul that is eternal. See, man, mankind, that's you and I, that includes woman. Mankind is made in the image of God. What does that mean? We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? And this sagging sin suit, thank you, brother, is decaying. No matter all the skin lifts or whatever you want to do, it's vanity. It's vanity. And it's sorrowful to you because why? You're laboring to keep that youthful vigor. But you sorrow because no matter how hard you try, the body just isn't going to cooperate with you. You can be you could be like Dr. Berg, okay? And I wish that man would get saved. You could be like Dr. Berg, who looks great for his age, okay? But still, the body decays. Hence, labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Job 28. 28. Like I said, dear friend, if you have an authorized version of the scriptures, follow me along. If not, just pay attention. Job 28, 28. And on the man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Verse 12 in Psalm 90. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The fear of the Lord. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. How long? How long do you have? Number your days. That what? We may apply our hearts unto wisdom. 
16 years ago, 16 years ago, the Lord saved me. Looking back in retrospect, beloved, I would have changed virtually every single thing of my life. I'm not one of these imbeciles, and I'm being polite when I say that. It's like, well, I'm grateful for the path God brought me to himself. I'm not. I would have changed everything. I wouldn't have done 98% of the things I did. Knowing what I know now. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. You have today, boy. What are you going to do? Stare at yourself in the mirror, huh? Make that crazy little video. Yeah, you look good, boy. Yeah, you look good. Sure. It's vanity, son. Girl. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. All this, what about you? Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children, the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross for the remission of your sin. It's there for everybody. But guess what? Everybody ain't going to be saved. Pick your part. Not everybody's going to be saved. God is a God of specificity. God is a God of exclusivity. Okay? God has chosen, God has elected a specific way in which he will save you. It's the way of the cross. And as we have talked at length about, most of you don't want that. Because it hurts. You think you could do better, huh? And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. You reap what you sow, buddy. Yeah. When I was most of your ages, in my early 20s, oh, man, I was a drug-using, sodomite-infested, fornicating devil. And hair longer than yours, kid. Hair longer than yours. Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11. We're not addressing the older generation. Because the older you get, the harder it gets. The more ingrained you get with your own self-delusion, the farther you go, the harder it is for you to turn back. You youngins out there, you 20-somethings, you 30-somethings. Ecclesiastes 11, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, go ahead, yeah. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. And he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. A fool according to Scripture, according to the Lord. The fool says in his heart there is no God. But see, you guys, there is a God. You call yourself an atheist? You're a lying devil, and you're stupid. You're a liar, atheist. You're a liar. There's no, you don't exist. You do believe in a God, atheist. Yourself. You are your own standard of judgment. You dictate what is right and wrong. You are your own God. 
I'd say that to any of y'all atheists. Faith, even that crazy Gene Hoglin looking like guy, I would say that 12 inches away from his face. You're a liar. You're your own God. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the way of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. <laughs> but know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart. Yeah, you got to grow up sooner or later, son, girl, brother, sister. Got to grow up sooner or later. That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Verse 9, now verse 10. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. A fleeting shoe, a fleeting player that dances and struts its stuff upon the stage and then is heard of no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. I just botched Macbeth there. A little Shakespeare, beg your pardon. I haven't read Shakespeare in a while, actually. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. Dispensational difference. You don't have to keep the commandments today to be saved or be right with God. But the point is, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Point. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. You, you visit the channel here that the Lord has given? It says right in the, the thing there, okay, from Romans chapter 14. Us saved people today in this dispensation we're going to give our, our account at the judgment seat of Christ. And our works are going to be judged for our rewards, not our salvation. Because you come to the Lord His way, the elect way of the cross, and He saves you. You're eternally secure today. Once saved, always saved. Today. It wasn't like that in other ages. Dispensations. Okay? But you hear from Christians. I'm sure you have. That you know, once saved, always saved, and beginning to end. That's nonsense. That's a lie. It's a lie. Meant to uh, hook you into a false sense of security. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. See, here's the problem with you people. You're asleep. Isaiah 66, verses 1 and verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? And today, today, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. There's a Methodist church building right down the road where it used to have on its marquee, uh, where are you going when you die, directions come inside or something like that, meaning that you got to go to a church to find God, a building that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a Roman Catholic lie. It's not for today. God forbid. For God's sakes, don't go to a church building, people. And those of you curious, you've gone to one of these disgusting phallus houses, you know, the steeple, and you look at these pretentious people. It's like, wait, I'm supposed to find God here, and yet you're talking about the NBA playoffs. I'm supposed. I'm. I'm here in a place that calls itself God's house, and you're gossiping like little women. And then what happens? Then they start playing their 
music, right? Clapping the hands and use mind control techniques and sound and visual stimuli, sight of your eyes. Most people get disgusted, and rightfully so, because Christianity is not the truth. It's not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And just so you know, dear friend, I'm not a Christian. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm a saint. See, right there. You've been influenced by Rome, Satan's church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's Roman Catholicism. Okay. If you hear of someone saying that Mystery Babylon is America, like Eric Lying Hart, uh, that they're working for the Vatican. Okay? That's a lie. See, you, you've been influenced by Rome and you don't know it. You hear saint, what do you think of? You think of something that's been told you by Rome. A saint, simply put, is a saved person and or someone who is made right, right with God. That's what a saint is. And what Satan dubs Christianity is actually called the way. Verse 2 in Isaiah 66. For all those things have mine hand made. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. And trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation, as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. It's talking about this in this kind of tense, because today, in this dispensation, or age, these are not things that are required for salvation, salvifically, pertaining to salvation, as they were under the law. You're not going to get that. If you have questions, there will be links in the description box. It's called dispensationalism, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to realize first, though, dear friend, your situation. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. There is a devil out there, I won't name his name, who watched the video that the Lord had me to do addressing him and his response onto that video, and he never named me. He never named me. But uh, his response was, yeah, I like my sin. I want my sin. I give credit and respect to someone who at least has the nerve to admit the truth. That doesn't help them at all, mind you. But it's like, okay, you, can, you at least have the stones. It's like, yeah, I like my sin. I want my sin. I don't want the true God. Okay, fine. Yeah, roll up another one, buddy. Go ahead and live it up because this is your best life. The life that awaits you is hell. You don't believe in hell? Well, that's too bad. You will. <laughs> And you scoff. That's what you always say. Hey, hey, don't take my word for it. You'll find out. You'll find out. Eventually, see, you'll find out whether or not you were truly saved. What do I mean by that? There are many out there who think they are saved because they simply, simply one day walking along, they simply believe and then they're saved. With no brokenness of their self-righteousness. Hiding under an umbrella. Taking a veiled form of contrition. Meaning, well, we're all sinners. You see, when you pray, these are called easy believists or free gracers. When you confront these people, 
very little is needed to bring out the true reality of their heart. I am better than, I'm not as bad as that guy. The avoidance of death, the avoidance of responsibility, and the avoidance of the fear of the Lord for the lesser man calling upon the greater. And the majority that we run into as saints, if it's not Catholic, uh, Pentecostal, or whatever, all daughters of the whore, Islam, one of the protected daughters of the whore, most of the times it's easy believism. Where you save yourself by your own belief. No brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. You're the better, calling on the lesser as far as easy, easy believism goes. And because, see, you guys want that, you believe that way, you know, it says here in verse 3, you have, yea, they have chosen their own ways. You are your own God. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. Hey, it's Pride Month. Pride goeth before fall. I'm writing down uh, links for the uh, description box, okay? Verse 4. You want to lie? You want to believe in a lie? God will oblige you. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Fear of growing old. Labor and sorrow, huh? Put away sorrow from thy flesh, the loss of your youthful vitality. For what? I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not yourself. Isaiah 29, Isaiah 29, verses 9 on verse 12. Isaiah 29, verses 9 on verse 12. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They're drunken, you're drunken. Not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. We're gonna we're gonna touch on this next here pretty quick. Sleep. Sleep. Deep sleep. Stay yourselves, verse 9, stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. How many of you have been drunk before? You get what they call beer goggles. You behold strange things. That's in one of the Proverbs, okay? All right? You get a liquid courage, as it were. You're deceived. You're deceived. Because you delight not in the things that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, wants, but delight in your own sin and take pleasure in your abominations, the Lord obliges you. It's like, okay, you don't want the truth? Go ahead. Go ahead. Live it up, boy. Go right ahead. Roll up another one. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Okay, says one that's imparted. You want what's fake? You want to lie? They'll let you have it. And this is one of the ways, one of the definitions of sleep according to Scripture. Sleep, as here in Scripture, deep sleep, a form of self-delusion. Okay? One of the four ways sleep is used in Scripture. 
We're going we're gonna to look at this, but remember this. The spirit of deep sleep. Self-delusion. You are your own God. <laughs> Bravo, buddy. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Why? Because you believe in your own heart that you're your own God. And see, when you decide that you are your own God, that's contrary to the God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you get to that point, it's like, <laughs> the Lord's like, you, okay, pal, there you go. There you go. Have at you. Go, go run along and go worship yourself like you do in your uh, little short video, son. Looking all handsome like you do and just standing there. I understand you're a model, son. I get it. Kid, that beauty of yours is going to fade away like, like grass. You need to get saved, boy. Your Shintoism is a lie. Buddhism? Come on. Buddhism? Really? <laughs> I mean, by the definition of Buddhism, it's all about self. It's of the devil. You need to get saved, son. Go. <laughs> well, I just lost my place. Excuse me, okay. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. You go to one of these Jesuit-trained Christian pastors. Tell me what this is. Well, it could mean this. We don't have a perfect standard except the original Hebrew and the Greek which don't exist. But you don't go to the Lord. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. I don't have a degree from a Jesuit-controlled seminary school, seminary school, which here in America, at least, in order to be in one of them phallus houses, you have to have their credentials, a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on your wall, and that's all they care about. I remember way back when people were denied, even though they had the skills required for the job, they didn't have a certain Literal, literal piece of paper. And they were denied because of that. Even though they had the qualifications to the T for the job. But they were denied because they didn't have the piece of paper. So the piece of paper holds more weight than the skill. Like here in America. Jobs will be given to those, to certain peoples because of ethnicity rather than qualification. Oh, boy! Oh, I just said it, didn't I? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And incidentally, dear friend, you mentioned white privilege. Well, I, I, but where, I, I, where was it? Where is that? Where is that? Excuse me. Thank you very little. Where, where, where is that white privilege that you talk about? Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verses ten, on to verse twelve. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Somebody got to tell you like it is. If you're, you're offended, take offense. And the gate. Don't let it hit you in the buttocks on the way out. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 and verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And Jesus Christ, he is the way. The way. The truth. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That's an exclusive statement. There are not like that. <laughs> Francis recently said that everybody's good. <laughs> wow. And that there are many paths to God. No, there isn't. There's only one. Anything else is false. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. See, God's a God of exclusivity and specificity. Read in Exodus sometime, dear friend, the to the detail description of the ark and the tabernacle. And you tell me that God is not a God of specificity. You tell me that. You tell me that with those of you Christians. And I got I to gotta knock this denomination King James Bible even Christians. Well, God doesn't care about certain things. You're a liar and you're a deceiver and you're greedy and you're money hungry. And for this cause, you don't love the truth. You haven't received the love of the truth. You don't want the truth, but you want to believe in a lie like we read in Isaiah 66. And for this cause, God shall... Send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And what's the biggest lie of all time? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. No one's answered that question. Not even heretics. What's a bigger lie than you are your own God? What's a bigger lie than that? that they all might be damned who believe not in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Romans chapter 1, verses 28 on to 32. Romans chapter 1, 28 on to verse 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And there are those out there who will tell you that being given over to a reprobate mind means that you are unsavable. That's a lie. That's a lie. Uh, Stephen Anderson, if you haven't heard of him, great. The closet sodomite Stephen Anderson. Okay. A King James Bible believer. A man who would tell you this is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. He's against the redemption of the purchased possession. He's against rightly dividing the word of truth. He stand, He says that America is Babylon. Okay? He stands for all the major doctrines of Rome. Okay? He's a sodomite. And I'd say he, he'd blow me away with his AK-47, and he could probably beat me up. But he, I'd say that 12 inches from his face, Stephen Anderson. I would. I'd say that 12 inches from his face. You're a lying sodomite. And you're working for the Vatican, Stephen Anderson. But see, he'll propose that like for you. Hey, today, hey, it's Pride Month, isn't it? He says that you sodomites can't be saved. That's a lie. I once was one myself. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, which the Lord abhorreth, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, 
unmerciful. Who knowing, just knowing here, not descending the 18 inches, okay? Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. Romans 13. Romans 13. Verses 11 on to verse 14. You could die today. I could die today, but I know where I'm going. I could have a stroke or a heart attack. Just because you're a kid doesn't mean, doesn't absolve you from the reality that you could die at any moment. Romans 13, 11 on to verse 14. Sleep. See, the Lord hath poured out upon many of you the spirit of deep sleep, a form of self-delusion, because you would receive not the love of the truth, but love your sin. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. We in context is referring to we saved people. The redemption of the purchased possession, which some of you may have heard, erroneously, disgustingly referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture, uh, it's the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? But you lost people, you most of you, you could die today. Your life could end like that. Good. And see, a saints saved people were one day closer to the redemption of the purchased possession, which could happen at any time. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day star, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. This is, a, this is specifically addressing saints save people. We're looking at this because you people need to wake up for it is too late. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. They are, uh, they are what, what was that in Isaiah 29 again? Huh? Isaiah 29 again? Verses 9 on, uh, where was that? Isaiah 29? Isaiah 29? Verse 9, stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken but not with wine. They stagger but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep self-delusion and hath closed your eyes and the prophets and your rulers the seers hath he covered it's not that he did that contrary to your free will you've chosen to reject him hence he's uh, he's guiding you along in your delusion you've already made the choice see a lot of people like to point to Pharaoh that God did that to Pharaoh Pharaoh, the Pharaohs believed in their own hearts that they were actual deities themselves. Hence, they already were gone. And as in Judo and in the martial arts like Judo, you throw a punch and you help the guy over, you use his own momentum to throw him onto the ground. You do very little. Same principle. You've chosen. And the Lord's like, okay, here, here you go. Okay? Let us walk honestly, back in Romans 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. And when you get right down to it, all of you are lusting after this sagging sin suit. I'm not addressing saved people. 
this thing of sleep. Sleep. We've already looked at one way sleep is used in Scripture as reference onto you being in a deep sleep, meaning you're self-deluded. But sleep, according to Scripture, the Authorized Version, uh, when reading the Authorized Version, there is a thing which uh, man refers to, it is not referred to it, it, like this in Scripture, called first mention. First mention, and yes, you devil heretic, first mention is not mentioned in Scripture. You're right. This, what this means is usually, usually, within Scripture, a certain word is usually defined by the first time it appears in Scripture. Hence, first mention. Okay? A word, a specific word is defined within context. Context, I liken onto a sandwich. You got the bread on the top, you got the peanut butter and jelly in the middle, and then you got the bread on the bottom, the bread of life, sandwiched between it, the peanut butter and jelly, okay, sandwiched between the bread of life. But context, you got bread, peanut butter and jelly, and then bread. The context is the peanut butter and jelly, but you take in the whole sandwich. Does that make sense? Okay? But, when it comes to sleep, the very first mention of sleep, Genesis chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, the singular usage thereof, sleep. Genesis 2, verses 21 and 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh thereof instead and, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Okay, Adam was and we saw in Isaiah 29 the spirit of deep sleep, meaning a self-delusion. Okay, you see how that works? And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he woman and brought her onto the man. Hey, woman, you were made for man. Man wasn't made for you. And it's so ironic today, especially here in America, with this ridiculous woke thing. And this has been pointed out by lost people. Feminists who stick up for the right of the woman are being overrun by men pretending to be women. <laughs> well, what, what's that? Uh, what was that? I saw the video, and even that disgusting pond scum, Joe Rogan made the point about this, about a guy who is a trans, a woman, pretending to be a woman in a UFC or whatever thing. It wasn't UFC because I think that that uh, a, a wife abuser, Dana White, is against that. But this guy pretending to be a woman got into one of the MMA, MMA things and fought against an actual woman. He was a man who had fake bosom and whatnot. And this woman, a manly looking woman, beat the snot out of that guy and he just shrugged it off. And she beat him so much to where she exhausted himself, herself, and the guy pretending to be a woman got her in a rear naked choke and submitted her. It's, it's, it's an irony that feminism is now being dominated by men pretending to be women. <laughs> okay? But, sorry for that little rabbit trail. If I'm going to offend you, I'm going to offend a lot of you. Take offense in the gate. But we see here the very first appearance, deep sleep, meaning what? Okay. We already read in Isaiah the spirit of deep sleep, meaning, and when you're in a deep sleep, 
When Adam was in a deep sleep, he took one of the ribs out and made a woman. When someone is in the spirit of deep sleep, you don't know what's going on. Self-deceived. Get it? Okay. Now, Psalm 13. Another variation of sleep according to Scripture. We all know that it's sleep. Now we go to sleep. Sleep, you know, which <laughs> the older you get, it becomes a luxury. Psalm 13. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Sleep, and we're going to look at these. Sleep in certain cases in Scripture is likened unto death. We'll, we'll see this. Okay? So, sleep, meaning actual physical taking rest and sleep. Spiritual sleep, meaning self deception. And sleep as meaning to death. That's actually only three, isn't it? <laughs> I said four, what didn't I? Excuse me. Excuse me. Let's continue. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Now, go to John chapter 11, if you, if you have an authorized version. Okay, if you're following along. John 11. Verses 9 on verse 15. John 11. Yes, <laughs> I said there are four ways. It's, uh, it's actually three. Excuse me. Excuse me. John 11, verses 9 on verse 15. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit, self defines itself, howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Uh, clearly in that context, sleep is being used as a reference unto death. Okay? Clearly. Clearly. You, you, you'd have to be, you'd have to be a, <laughs> you'd have to be a Christian to try to, Refute that. <laughs> and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go on to him. And he's like, awake him out of sleep. Bring him back to life. Acts 7. Acts 7. Verses 59 on to 60. Okay. Showing you again. And like I said, it was, I said, I made an error. I made a mistake. I said that there are four ways. It's three. Okay. Actual sleep, the sleep of death, and spirit of sleep, meaning self-deception. Three, not four. Excuse me for saying that. Acts chapter 7. Verses 59 on to 60, the last two verses of the chapter. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. A sleep. Meaning he died. Okay? So, three. 
not four, excuse me. Three, spirit of sleep, self-deception, actual sleep at rest. Sleep meaning death. Psalm 88. Psalm 88. Psalm 88. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down to the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead. Hmm. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. I have no life. Right? Right. Absolutely. But also, there is another form of being dead, talked about in Scripture. Dead in trespasses and sins. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. Until you know that thou shalt not kill, hey, what's wrong with killing, right? Until you learn that thou shalt not covet, you do what George Carlin says. Leave coveting alone, it creates jobs. But God abhorreth the covetous. You understand what I'm saying? So, free among the dead. Dead in trespasses and sins. Now, this is talking about, you know, a different context, but remember, there's death, you're dead. There's a spiritual death. Dead in trespasses and sins. You have no life. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Hey, you out of your own God? Huh? You're dead. You're dead. Revelation chapter 3. Hold your place there. Check this out. Revelation chapter 3. And the thing about the book of Revelation you have to understand. The book of Revelation is not for us doctrinally today. There are things that pertain for instruction and righteousness. Okay? But doctrinally, it is not for us today. Okay? you got to remember that. And the book of Revelation is chronological. Someone who tells you otherwise is trying to justify a man's doctrine and not the scripture. Remember that, King James Bible-believing Christian. Please. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 out of verse 6. And unto the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. Ooh, ooh, seven spirits. Seven spirits. Thank you. Big part. Seven spirits of God. And the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Thou shalt not surely die. For in the day you eat, ye eat thereof, meaning doing what God said not to do, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's Genesis 3. Go find it. See, because you do contrary to God, you think you have life, but you're dead. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You have a name that you live, but you're actually dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. You can die at any time, dear friend. You think you got you think you got life? 
Apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, you're dead. You're dead in trespasses and sins, son. Go. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Three books. Three books. Personally, my favoriteest video that the Lord ever gave me to do. Never mind. <clears throat> he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Back to Psalm 88. Verse 6. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deep. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up. I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Salah. Once you're dead, physically dead, you're dead. And you're going to go either to heaven or go to hell. But the spiritually dead. Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Hinduists, Taoists, Shintoists, even those of Judaism today, which is not scriptural Judaism, because if it were, they'd be saints. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord. In the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and my acquaintance into darkness. See, when the Lord is drawing you to himself, like a bone, meat on the bone, shaving things off. So, see, because the God of Scripture puts his finger on that one thing, the one thing you lack. And he hammers it home, boy. He sure does. Ecclesiastes 9. Some of you who are being led unto the Lord, you might be knowing that. Hmm? Ecclesiastes 9. Verses 1 on to verse 6. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth, and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth is he that feareth an oath. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. There is one event that we all have in common. What's that? And unto men it is appointed once to die. And after this, and after that, excuse me, the judgment. Death. See, you see, you're young, you don't think about it. 
You abuse your body. Abusers of yourselves with mankind, right? Hey, it's Pride Month! But every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. You're going to die. This is an evil among all things that are done under the heaven under the sun. There is one event unto all, yea. Also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. <laughs> right there. Pope Francis, look in the community section. Says everyone in heart is good. How could he get away with that? Because man has been made stupid according to the things of God. That's wrong for you. And madness is in their heart. Madness denotes insanity. Well, they live, and after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Ah, the pride, the pride of the pack, the lion, right? A dog who returns to, there's more hope of a living dog who goes to back to his vomit than someone who dies in his sin being an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. You're, you're not going to escape this, kid. You're not. <laughs> you imbecile. Self-theist. Your belief is irrelevant. You'll find out before it's too late, hopefully. And if not, it will be too late. For the living know that they shall die. And if it's more than 70 years, their labor, their, their its labor is uh, labor and sorrow, excuse me. Excuse me, I was just messing that up. Because you do everything you can to keep your life labor and sorrow. If it's beyond 70 years, if it's uh, 80 years, labor and sorrow. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Oh! When you're dead, it's over. But the spiritual dead know not anything. He hello! <laughs> hello! Look at Christianity. Look at religion, people. The dead know not anything. That, that's a reference on to those that are actually dead. But spiritually dead, they don't, they don't know anything. You Christians, you've been saved for 25 years, and yet you don't know about rightly dividing the word of truth. You're against the redemption of the purchased possession. You believe that America is Babylon? And you, and you believe... That uh, you got to forgive in order to be forgiven. It's like, dude. Dude. Neither have they any more reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Ephesians, this dead. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, the book of Ephesians, what we are going to be reading, is in context for saved people. But we're looking at this for a specific point to show you that unless you are saved, you're dead. You have a name that you liveth, but you're dead. What are you dead in? And you hath he quickened, quickened made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. If you aren't saved, if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, you're dead in trespasses and sins. I myself was once dead in trespasses and sins. So was every saint. At one time, you dear saint, you dear brother, you dear sister, were like them. Like you lost people. Dead in trespasses and sins. 
but you have a name that you live with, but you're dead. Okay, you get it? Do you get it? That's very simple. Where in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's Satan. This is talking about Satan. The prince of the power of the air, the little G God of this world, who has blinded your mind. Because you do contrary to what God said. And you are your own God, knowing good and evil. And see, see, let's keep reading. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. That's, I was like that once myself. So was every single solitary saint. I was you once, lost person, but the Lord saved me, okay? And we're by nature children of wrath, even as others. Again, God doesn't love you. You reject Jesus Christ, you reject the true gospel. You are what? What does that say? You're a child of wrath. God doesn't love present tense the Christ rejecting sinner. Period. Do you understand? But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he, past tense, loved us. John 3.16 is not the gospel, by the way. How many of you, how many of you lost people have heard, uh, well, the gospel is John 3.16? No, it isn't. Because John 3.16 was before what? The death, burial, and resurrection. The law was still binding. In the description box, there will be a lot of videos for you. If you want more information. Okay? Let's continue. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. This is talking about us saved people now. Okay? You're lost, you're dead in trespasses and sins. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our destination is fixed. Once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. Okay? That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And Colossians 2, Colossians 2, oops, Colossians 2, verses 13 on to verse 15. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. And when the Lord saves you, he seals you with himself. That's the circumcision made without hands. Circumcision is not a requirement salvifically today to the Jew and also to the Gentile. Okay? Circumcision made without hands. That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? Okay? And you being dead in your sins, and this uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Meaning, the law. The law is right and good. The law, you know, the Ten Commandments, those are God's perfect requirements. However, 
you figure out sooner or later that at your best state, you can never keep the law. See, the Ten Commandments, the law was there to show you that you are inept, that you are inadequate in and of yourself to keep per perfectly God's perfect requirements. The only one who did that was Jesus Christ himself. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He is God the Father. He is the only one who could keep his commandments perfectly. Jesus Christ never sinned. The law was there to show you that you couldn't, at your best, keep the Ten Commandments. You say you do this one, but you break that one, you've messed up the whole thing. See, that's the purpose of the law, to show you your inadequacy. Okay? And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Verses 17 and 18. The dead praise not the Lord. Now look at this. Neither any that go down into silence. The dead praise not the Lord. Neither any that go down in the silence. Look at that verse. If, you, if you're following along. Hmm. Dead in trespasses and sins. Like Christianity. They don't praise the Lord. Neither those that are in the grave. But we saints will bless the Lord from this time forth. And forevermore. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 19. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. What kind of sleep is this talking about? This kind of sleep. Because there are devils out there who are up at every waking hour of the day to cause strife, division, and to attack the saints. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Bread of wickedness. Roman Catholicism tells you that a perfectly round cookie shaped after the sun, Roman Catholicism is modern Baal worship. They say that the bread, the Jesuit priest does, abracadabra, hocus pocus, woody woody. And they turn this into the actual Jesus Christ, right? Bread of wickedness and the wine which the Jesuit priest the cup you know woody 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 hocus pocus agabracadabra turns the wine into the blood of Christ okay for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day the day star arrive in your hearts. The Lord Jesus Christ. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. At what they stumble. Why? Because they have the spirit of deep sleep. You have the spirit of deep sleep upon you, dear friend. Oh, but Proverbs chapter 6 now. Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 4 on to verse 11. 
Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Hold your place here, and go to 1 Peter chapter 5, the hunter. What was that? That Bjork woman? Girl? <laughs> Did that I am the hunter? Yeah. I'm not talking about the hunter from England either. The Jesuit provincial that he is. Oh, uh, where is that? Uh, yes. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8, on to verse 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, Walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Back to Proverbs 6. Verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Oh, I got time, huh? You got time, right? Huh? What if you don't? What if you don't? Boy. Girl. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O slugger? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Hmm. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an honored man. See, when the redemption of the purchased possession happens, I don't care on what continent on God's planet. You are on everything in a moment in the twinkling of an eye is going to change history is going to change with the redemption of the purchase possession and your wants will be as an armed man because once we get redeemed the body of Christ be brought out you know called up hither everything changes and it's going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works. And God is going to be concentrating on Israel. Our salvation is near today. Proverbs 19, verses 15 and 21. Proverbs 15, uh, 19, verses 15 under 21. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. It's hard. It hurts. Going the way of the cross. That's why so many of you are, if you're offered, hey, just believe and receive. There's no death in that. There's no pain in just believe and receive. You can just magically believe and save yourself and go on and live like a devil. But see, when someone who has half a brain, like some self-theists and Muslims, it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay? Just save yourself wait a second but yet so just because you save yourself by your own belief so that justifies you living like one of them he that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul he that despiseth his way shall die this is what is referred to as a dispensational difference okay you are not keeping your own soul today the Lord is the one who keeps your soul today if you go the way of the cross, okay? 
This was written under law where eternal security was not there. We're reading this to instruct you in righteousness. Okay? He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his way shall die. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. See, these are works. Works are not required today for salvation. Okay? He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel, and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart, Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. I got time. Oh, why can't I do this? Why? Oh, I'll do Shintoism, Taoism, Buddhism. Many devices in a man's heart. But Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Proverbs 20, verses 12 on to verse 13. The hearing ear and the seeing eye. The Lord hath made even both of them. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread, the bread of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Verses 36 and 46. The Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26, 36 and 46. Now 27, Brad. Excuse me. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here. And watch with me. Jesus in Christ is God the Father. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Okay? God the Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. The Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, has come in the flesh, is the body. Okay? God the Father in Jesus Christ. God the Father in heaven. This isn't rocket science. God is a lot bigger than Trinitarian. And by the way, you're watching, the, uh, the Trinity is nonsense. The, uh, uh, atheists and that Muslim guy, they attack the Trinity all day. And they're right. They're right. The Trinity is nonsense. Okay, that, and that's stupid. Don't, don't fall for the Trinity. Okay, please. Okay, don't. Anyway. And he went a little further and fell on his face. And prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Now this is a fulfillment of prophecy, but think about what's going on. In a moment, such as the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter, who said, though I'll deny thee, I never will. And then yet he denies the Lord atrociously three times. And the Lord looks at him and says, like, I told you so. But yet they were asleep. They were asleep. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. And here's one that the devils really can't handle. 
and you lost people. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you lost people, you're all about flesh, like your father the devil. See, when you say in your heart that you are your own God, you are of your father the devil, okay? Your belief on that is irrelevant, okay? It's either or. You're either saved or lost. You're either with the Lord Jesus Christ or you're with Satan. Okay? He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh my father, if this cup may if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, I will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them. And went again, away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Sleeping during a moment when they should be praying. Sleeping when all things were about to come to pass. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he that he is at hand that doth betray me. See, when the redemption of the purchased possession happens, dear friend, I don't care on what continent on earth you are on, everything changes like that. And I believe you're going to feel it. Because the body of Christ is gone. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then you're going to hear Christians tell you believe and receive when in reality it's by faith and works. Damn many of you to hell to take that mark in your right hand or in your, in your forehead. What you waiting for, boy? First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five. Verses one under verse eleven. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, brethren, saved people, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now we're not going to talk about what the, the meaning of the day of the Lord, but as a thief in the night, as we already have looked. Hey, lost person! Christian! You could die at any time! You have today! Well, I, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. What if you don't have tomorrow? What if you don't have ten minutes? Huh? Comes like that. Good. For when they shall say peace and safety, they. Oh, you, you saved yourself by your own belief? Don't worry about it. Or whatever connotation you want to add there. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. When the Lord come. Knocking on that door. And your time is up. But ye brethren. Saints. Saved people. Are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. I'm prepared. The actual going through the motions of dying, the heart stopping or whatever, that, that's, a, but the actual after death, 
A saint has nothing to worry about. Why? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When I die, this sagging sense who dies, I'm going to go be with the Lord. As it is appointed on the men once to die and after that the judgment. Okay? When I die, I'm going to be in heaven with the Lord. You're lost. You're not saved. You die, you go into hell. And you're going to burn forever. Ye are all the children of light, saved people. And the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. What kind of sleep is being referenced there? I'll let you figure that one out. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Well, no one's looking. Uh, who's going to know? That little's unhurt. The only place there in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. But let us, who are of the day, saved people, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Okay? We, according to Scripture, know. That we are saved, eternally secure. We know that when we die, we go to heaven. Catholics can't answer that. And if they do, they try to, they warp it into, well, I know because Jesus knows my heart. Yeah, he sure does. Sure does. What Jesus are you talking about? Oh, you mean the one in the middle? You mean the Trinity? Yeah, yeah, see the finger? For God hath not appointed us to wrath, saved people. The time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, kind of sleep is being mentioned there, we should live together with him. See, sleep is used in uh, two different ways in this chapter here, in this connotation. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Verses 6 on to verse 17. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. God doesn't love you. God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. God loves you is a heretical, satanic doctrine to draw people into a false sense of security, into another gospel, into another Jesus. You reject Jesus Christ. You reject the true gospel. God doesn't love you. God does not love you unconditionally. You go the way of the cross and he saves you. Yes. But you reject him. His love is not for you. His love's at, his love's at the cross. The way he's elected. That's the way you got to go. And yeah, it hurts. Quit your whining and go there. But see, see, he doesn't force you to go that way. You've got to make the right decisions. And most of you have decided, I don't want that. Because it hurts. Tough guy.
Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, referring unto safe people. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the capital S spirit, that means the Lord himself, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, sleepest, excuse me, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Make the right decision. You don't save yourself. But see, unlike what Calvinists tell you, God doesn't hold a gun to your head forcing you to make the right decision. Nor does the devil hold a gun to your head forcing you to make the wrong decision. See, because if God decided your salvation for you, you'd be a machine. You'd be a robot. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Okay? See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3, on to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. He will. He wants everyone to be saved. But not everybody is going to be saved because God has elected a way the way of the cross, which is death. You want the Lord? You want to be right with God? You want the Lord to save you? you got to go the way he's elected. You don't boot the door and climb up some other way, which Christianity offers you in abundance. And so does every other daughter of the whore, like Islam and Taoism, Buddhism, whatever you want to call it. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And this does not mean that everyone is going to be saved. Okay, like I said, there will be quite a few uh, links for you in the description box to consider. Okay, if you have any questions. Okay? Here's something that you have to get through your head. You need a Savior. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That includes you. All your Taoism, Shintoism, Islam, whatever, Catholic, whatever. Baptist, Pentecost, King and Bible in prison. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That includes you. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. Why? There is no fear of God before their eyes. 
Your answer is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the way of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood that he shed for the remission of your sins. I didn't ask him to do that. That doesn't matter. See, God would be cruel if he didn't give you a way out. He has given you a way. The way! But see? That way is death. The cross. The cross is death, dear friend. That's the way you got to go. That's the way you got to go. What do you do, huh? The Lord's broken you. You realize that you can't save yourself, that all your righteousnesses are as filthy rags, a menstrual cloth. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 1 and verse 13. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And see, for you, what does this mean? You're looking to establish your own righteousness. Because you follow the Tao, or Shintoism, or Buddhism, <laughs> the religion of self. You're elect. You had the cookie. See, see, you're trying to establish your own righteousness, not going after the righteousness of God, which is Christ crucified. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, like the Jesuit priest does with the cookie. Or like you, thinking you save yourself by your own belief. Or who shall descend into the pit, or into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thine heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Greek is Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And see, if you do that apart from what we read in Romans chapter 3, being broken of your self-righteousness, thinking that you're self-righteous. I called on the name of the Lord a thousand times and I was never saved because you were never broken. Brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord which calls you, which will produce in you to call upon his name. That's going to be it for this little video. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. If you have questions, links in the description box. Go, son! What if today is your day? 
What if today's your day and you and the Lord guided you to see this video? He's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna trust that stupid Japhethite. Don't. Let's say it the scripture. Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you for you brethren who have prayed for us. We love you. Thank you very kindly. This has been a real trying past couple, past week was really trying for us. So thank you. Thank you. You know who you are. We'll see you in the next video. Au revoir.